Hey everybody, welcome to Dream Chasers. This is the interview series for people who want human marketing on a zero budget. I'm your host, Dominic DeSouza. Listen in for tips and insights about 15 minutes a week. It's the dreamers who make the future chase yours. So this week we are joined by Chris Askew, the founder of Tilt Marketing. He runs a couple of podcasts. He's based out of Cleveland, Ohio. Chris, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. Fantastic. So, hey, today what, what I'd like to uh, pick your brain about is the issue with discounts when it comes to running a small business. So followers of the, the interview series, the podcast here are uh, small businesses. They're usually working from home. They can't ad spend their way to success. They can't use Facebook ads to buy followers and whatever. Uh, but whenever they are trying to come up with advertising or content, you know, marketing, invariably the recommendation is, oh, take a few bucks off or give people a season pass or, you know, the, the, the temptation is to always discount their, their rates, discount their services to get people in the door. Yeah. Let's just talk about that for a second. That is a huge problem with a lot of marketing. Yeah. And um, I've run into some, uh, you know, even friends of mine who actually operate home-based businesses. Uh, one guy that I know, um, he actually does these gorgeous carved wood, um, you know, decorations for a home. So if you take your family photo and send it to him, he can actually laser carve it out of their, um, or however he does cool. it with a CNC machine. Yeah. But he runs into that problem all the time. And like he, he had asked me a question privately and we actually made it one of our episodes uh, during our small business series on our podcast. He'd asked me, um, you know, like he's always trying to compete on price against his competition and he's always trying to lower that price. And he said, whenever I try to run on Etsy, I feel like I have to drop my price dramatically just to even compete. And I kind of coached him and, and told him, because his name's Chris also. I, I coached him. I was like, Chris, you can't, you can't continue to chase your tail by dropping your prices. Because if you do, you're never going to be able to expand. You're never going to be able to grow. You're never going to be able to get out of your garage and into you know, the business that you want to start where you have other people working for you and, you know, you have national contracts, you know, supply, because he wants to get into like Pat Catans, for example, and sell his goods there. Mm -hmm. But the problem is like, you know, he's got that temptation to drop his price and to keep it, compete on price. And I just personally, I think for most, you know, small businesses, price competition is, um, just a losing strategy. It's very, very difficult to maintain your profit margins if you keep undercutting, undercutting them. And the reason why I think a lot of people undercut their profit margin and lower their price isn't necessarily because that's what the market will bear. I think they're being dictated by fear, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So, you know, and what I try to coach people, and, and I'm sure you've noticed this too in business, you know, business uh, marketing um, and going through the whole marketing process and the branding process for business can be a little bit like a therapy session mm -hmm. because business owners have so much of their heart and soul that they put into this. Like you can't really separate. I know for me, I'm a business owner. The business is my personality. You know what I mean? It is me. Yeah. It's, 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 I'm wrapped up in it so much. It's, it's a representation of all of my hopes and dreams. It's a representation of what I want for my future. It's a representation of my personality, but here's the thing. It's also a representation of your weaknesses. You know what I mean? And if you're not confident in what you're doing, those weaknesses will be exposed in how you're presenting your business. And if you're lowering your price to me, that's usually an indicator that you're allowing that, you know, that fear, because I know in business, man, dude, let's be real. It's famine or fee sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I think, I think, you know, a lot of people end up lowering their price based off of being afraid of not having the business come in. Mm -hmm. But in reality, I know anecdotally for me, I would rather have less projects that pay good mm -hmm. than have a litany of projects that I'm struggling with. And when I do the math on it, it's just not adding up. Mm -hmm. I think too, I think a lot of businesses don't also really calculate the cost of what goes into it. And what I coached this, uh, this guy with the wood carving company, you know, I coached him on, Hey, like he told me, Oh, my product only costs me $10 to buy this slab of wood. And it only takes me, 
you know, X amount of time to do it. So I could sell this slab of wood for 25 bucks when my competition is selling it for 70. And I, I looked at him, I was like, dude, like Chris, you have to also go into what are your taxes that you're paying? You know, what are you spending on marketing? If you, if you are doing any, what are you spending on, on rent? If you wanted a business, like you have to calculate all of that into your, into your time. Mm -hmm. And especially those small businesses that operate on like Etsy, for example, I, I think a lot of it, when it's a hobby based business, mm -hmm. they aren't really valuing the amount of time that they're putting into it. And a good, for instance, is I know somebody else who makes these wonderful blankets, but they basically only charge for the price of the yarn that they're doing. And she's okay. a wonderful old lady. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. And I get it. I understand. But if she's ever looking to make money off of it, you know, it's, 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 you're not going to be able to, you're breaking even at best, if not losing money by going through, you know, a pricing war. Absolutely. And, and it, you know, when it also, if you're in a, a service-based business, <clears throat> whether online or even in person, um, like, if you're not a big chain like a Walmart and you're selling commoditized yeah. goods where you can do things in bulk and then a discount isn't going to hurt much because, you know, you drop tomatoes two bucks, but somebody, yeah. nobody comes in to just buy tomatoes. They get that plus something else. So you yep. break even. But if you're, if all you're doing is selling copywriting or you're, you know, you're an AC technician or something, you don't have anything else to sell. Yeah. So price then becomes unintentionally or not, it can become a reflection of your quality. Yeah. Right. Anytime you see somebody with, who's jacked his rates up, it communicates th there's, there's something very serious or he's a total idiot who doesn't know how to price something. But most of the time, it's, this guy's serious about what he's doing. Yeah. I can't afford him. But, you know. What's really funny is early on, like um, in my advertising career, I did the whole freelancing game and I would always – do this price point war where I would try to undercut competition just to stay afloat. And I ended up doing logos for just an ungodly cheap amount of money. Hmm. When uh, later on, you know, as I've grown and gained experience, I realized like I was really hurting myself because I've literally had people tell me like, we didn't hire you because we didn't think you were professional enough. You know what I mean? Like, like this was when I was in my early twenties and that really was like a wake up call when I looked at the ad agency that they went with and I'm like, okay, yeah, this makes complete and total sense. Whereas that company was prepared to drop $10,000 on a rebrand. I was trying to only do it for 500 bucks because I was, you know, young and in college and living in my parents' basement. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that doesn't, the where you are in your life doesn't dictate the value you can bring to a client. Does that make sense? Like, Unpack you know, that. that's powerful. Yeah. So if you're just a, um, a new person to business, it's all, like I said, business is a reflection of our true selves. And if you're young and if you are out of college and working out of your parents' house to try to make it and you're hustling, that doesn't um, mean that you're not valuable and that you shouldn't charge. You know what I mean? Like, like don't let your circumstances in life dictate what you are able to bring to the table with business and the value that you can, you can bring to the table. So what I try to coach people on is, you know, instead of the race to the bottom, you're absolutely right. Instead of the commoditization. And I think Walmart was a perfect example. Uh, one thing that they did years ago was they just dramatically dropped the price on plastic pickles down to $2 a jar and it was a tremendous loss leader that got people to the deli and cheese section of their store. And that was the entire reason why they did it. Mm -hmm. Now, Walmart is a big player. They were able to really kind of force Vlasic to do it because they were their largest um, uh, purchaser. And Vlasic really had no choice in the matter. Um, they didn't like the deal. There's, you, there's business articles you can read on this whole story. But you're absolutely right. They, they did that as a loss leader. Now, us in service industry, we're not Walmart. You know, most small business owners, it's you. And uh, I really highly recommend, you know, rather than focusing on what you can drop in price, look at what you can up in value. So the more value that you are able to give, the more value you're able to deliver your end client, and the more, um, the better customer experience you're able to bring them, that is going to help you be able to not only keep your prices 
on the level with your competition, but it's going to enable you to actually raise your prices even above them. And you're going to be able to have customers who are gladly going to pay you because you're doing an amazing job and you're providing more value and going further than what your competition is. I highly recommend, you know, doing that. And what I coached my buddy Chris on is rather than, you know, just saying, hey, I'm going to match the price of this wood carving, I'm going to also give you a smaller wood carving that you can give to a friend or family member as well for that same price that my, my competition is doing at full price. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's kind of, you know, you're giving away something for free, but what he was doing there was he's trying to get that um, in the hands of somebody else too, in order to help grow his customer base also. Mm -hmm. And he's not taking a discount on it. He's making full price. He's making three times as much as he was before after being coached to do that. So I think, I think changing the game to what value are you bringing and recognizing that value is so important to a small business in order to really dramatically impact their future. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, perfect case in point for this whole discussion was a uh, <clears throat> young friend of mine who's working in uh, the, the AC repair field and he's moving to a new state. Yeah. And uh, we were brainstorming or, or he was talking to me about, you know, I'm thinking I get down there. And what I'll do is I'll discount my services so that I'm, you know, the, the, the cheapest guy because he's not joining a new company. He's thinking of maybe starting his own. So mm -hmm. he's going to try to undercut everybody. And I didn't have a response for him immediately. And I thought it, this would be a fantastic talking point because he does that. He shows up somewhere new, tries to undercut everybody. Yeah. He's just basically telling them, I'm not worth your time because I have no credibility, I have no mission statement, I have no clear brand, I have no reason to be cheaper. Why would, you know, completely unknown quantity, as opposed to somebody who's, who walks in and maybe takes their rates up 10 bucks over yeah. the next guy, yep. and then comes up with a new branding, you know, position or something. Mm -hmm. So we'll get into that in, in a second, maybe a little more of that kind of discussion. Uh, I'd love to go for a couple of minutes into more of your story, Chris, and how you got into marketing and hey, why you love this stuff so much. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I ended up, uh, long story short, um, really long story short, <laughs> I actually started off as a youth pastor way back in the day. Okay. Um, and I realized that like church marketing just absolutely sucked. This was at <laughs> <laughs> the inception of like before, yeah, it's true. Most church marketing does really suck, by the way. Um, but um, <laughs> I was around the incept. I was a youth pastor around the time that Facebook was just coming out. MySpace was still the big thing, mm -hmm. and I started off actually helping churches be able to capitalize on social media. Well, I ended up going to uh, design school for graphic design, and then realized graphic design is a really, really tough game. Um, you know, because I was young and I was competing on price, I ended up competing with companies like Fiverr and things like that to where, dude, like the question really was, I was making myself a commodity because I was doing that. And people were saying, well, I, I can go online and crowdsource this for far cheaper than I could even pay you. Mm -hmm. So I said, forget it. And I um, changed my major over to business. Mm -hmm. And then I went into programming as well. So I started doing front end development, website development. And then from there, that just kind of grew from, you know, hey, I, I like the business side of it. I like the design side of it. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grow this into like an actual ad agency and actually be able to help businesses completely change the way that they're branding themselves in order to um, build up their company and uh, make some real good money, you know what I mean, doing it. And then same for us, you know, like if, if, if the companies that I'm working with are growing, that means we're growing too with them because I very much believe in having long-term relationships with clients and, uh, you know, like I just said, providing more value than what they're paying for so that working with our agency is a no brainer rather than going to find, you know, some other agency down the street that might not deliver like we do. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, but yeah, that's, absolutely. that's how we started. I, uh, <laughs> you know, I started off in graphic design and moved over to programming and then uh, moved into just business after that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I find if you really want to be, if you want those, that partnership, 
you know, with your clients, then you have to start thinking bigger than your set of skills or your tools Absolutely. and just get into the strategy of the thing. I was yep. same, same situation f seven years ago, just gotten married and, uh, it was a, a crazy point, crazy situation, job fell through, whatever. So I started trying to compete with graphic design and I was on Upwork. I was on, you know, these other things. Yep. I couldn't land anything because yeah. there was always somebody else who didn't need as much money, who could do yep. it faster. <laughs> yep. Darn it. So I tried something else. But, um, but so when you change, when you change from that commodity thinking to, Hey, we're going to provide strategy and strategy is the most important thing that you can offer your business, at least from an ad agency's perspective. Because, you know, we, we as an ad agency, like I'll actually outsource a lot of the design work or a lot of, um, you know, the, the stuff that's normally commoditized, but what's not able to be commoditized is us coming in and actually doing consultation with the company mm -hmm. and saying, you've done this, 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 and this, and it has not netted you the results that you're looking for. So why don't we change things up a little bit and try something different? That's the insight that, that, that really does bring an extreme amount of value to what we're doing mm -hmm. rather than just saying, Hey, like I can design this, this piece for you. You know, I always say like, why you have to, I don't know if you've read the book by uh, Simon Sinek, uh, always start with why yep. that's an amazing, amazing book. And it should be the forefront of every conversation you're having when it comes to marketing and branding. Mm -hmm. Why, why are you doing this? Why are you in business? If you're a small business, like this guy that you're talking about, um, the AC repair, why are you in business, man? Why are you, are you know are you are you here to to feed your family? Are you here to grow? Are you trying to build a team around you? You know why are you doing what you're doing? And then as you're answering those questions, you're really going to realize, okay, if, if what I'm doing is all about creating a future for my family, why on earth would I discount that? You I mean what? I, and when what you can be doing instead is you know being the guy who shows up first uh, when he's called, calling back right away. Um, providing quotes and estimates that go into so much more detail than your competition does, um, you know, uh, showing up after the fact, after you've done a service call to recheck up on somebody. And then, you know, as you're earning that respect, ask, ask for other referrals, like don't discount your price. There's That's, other ways yeah, brilliant. to get, yeah. That, that whole attitude is something I have, I have loved doing with every brand I've worked with instead of, instead of lowering the bar or playing at the table that everybody else is yeah. used to playing it, I help them or love helping them redefine the bar. What is yeah. normally uh, the expectation for somebody in this industry? That's good. So now let's dig into your, your brand, your differentiators. What are you going to do that's different? And almost every time it's there, it's latent. It's either part of their personality or their process, but they've just never thought of leading with it, of using it as a, a point of distinction to set themselves apart. Uh, and sometimes it's, it's fun stuff like your personality or yeah. how you show up, or maybe you show up with a cup of coffee for your client at every job. Exactly. You know, exactly. Yep. That kind of thing. That's why I say, instead of, instead of discounting, what can you do to actually, or not even do anything, take it up 10 bucks, but then yeah. really go with your, with a, a more interesting and a clearer brand, you know, and maybe even pick a specific audience. I think that's the other thing is, is niching and then communicating to a particular kind of person that can help you close those kinds of things faster or be more relevant, you know, especially at a new price point. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, we had another show on our podcast called customer experience is the new brand. And I fully believe that exactly what you just said, where you're showing up with a cup of coffee. What does a cup of coffee cost? You know, a cup of coffee costs a whole lot less than running your Facebook ads does. But what it's going to do is it's going to solidify that relationship that you have with your client. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a small gesture, but it's a small gesture your competition isn't making. Mm -hmm. And it shows that you value them and it shows that they're important to you. Right. So why not? You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's one of those small gestures that, you know, shows that you're valuable. And you're absolutely right. Like use your personality. If you're a very personal person record like here's one thing that i like to do when i'm working on a pitch for a client i'll actually record a video of myself saying hey thank you for the opportunity blah 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 um and i'll send that video to that client privately you know what i mean like and it's and it's just one of those small things that like i'm able to do like on my phone mm -hmm. but you know none of my competition is doing it that is that's can you imagine an ac guy 
hitting record and sending you a little video. I mean, Absolutely. Like, hey, here's yeah. the quote. I'd love to be able to do this for you. You know, I've been doing this for years in this business. Um, you know, thank you, Mr. Customer. Uh, you know, the price on this is X, Y, Z. But here's what you're getting with that. You're going to get me showing up. You're going to get me coming at you with coffee every time we meet <laughs> up. Uh, you know, yeah. and go through the list. And like, dude, that's mm -hmm. going to be something that will be irresistible. Yep. You know, and even you could probably even charge, you know, mm -hmm. more than 10 bucks over what your competition is doing. Mm -hmm. If you're taking it, taking it that way and, and recording that extra video might only take another, you know, two minutes to do and to send, but it's, it's that creativity that comes along with it that, you know, most other companies are just stuck on coast sometimes. Right. You know what I mean? And, and, and if you're actually got your foot on the gas and coming up with creative ways to make an impact, you're going to be able to lap them. I promise you. You're going to no, be able to allow for them. Sure. For sure. It, yeah. We try to scale stuff too fast. Yeah. Uh, and especially if you're, if like you said, you're running an Etsy store or you're a service-based, you know, like you're, you're a copywriter out of Zimbabwe, right? Um, and I've met one. Uh, lean the other way, right? Yeah. And, and put more of your personality, more of your humanity into it. Uh, it's nobody else is doing that. And it's and because it can't scale you're creating a, well, more of that magic around the connection that you're creating with them. Uh, yeah, it, you're just, you're playing a completely different game. Uh, have you heard of a book called um, Talk Triggers by Jay Bear? Jay Bear, yes, sir. Yeah, I have, <laughs> yep. I love that book. Same, so same kind of thing. So in this example, you know, somebody showing up with, well, like you're an Etsy store, you should sell shawls and you have a little video saying, you know, I've got your shawl right here, you put it in the box. Yeah. Not dropping it in the mail to you. You do that for every client. Yep. That is a talk trigger because yep. nobody does that. You're an AC guy or somebody's locked out or their plumbing's broken. You show up with a bag of candy for the kids. Um, Absolutely. You know, low sugar candy, right? Probably stay safe. And uh, some <laughs> coffee for the mom because now they're out of action while you're doing this thing, right? Yep. Nobody takes care of people, you know, while they're in pain. Like, you know, it has yeah. that kind of attention do that instead of discounting. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it's, it's the little things that I think you can do to really think about exactly that. Like, what is somebody else not doing? I got my brakes done on my car when I went to go pick it up from the shop. Um, they didn't say anything, but inside my glove box, they had left like a bag of, bag of like candy for my kids. They were with me and they left a coffee um, coupon to Starbucks for me. You know, they didn't have to do that. They really didn't have to do that. You know, I was not expecting that at all, mm -hmm. but it was just one of those. And inside was like a note from the owner, like an actual handwritten note that said, hey, we just want to say thank you for, you know, supporting our business when we know you have other choices. Here's something for your children and get yourself a cup of coffee today. You know, like it, it made a great, um, like, I'll take my car back there. No problem. And guess what I did? I told my friends about it. Mm -hmm. I talked about it on my podcast. You know what I mean? He got free exposure for it. He didn't know that I do, did a podcast. You mean, he, that's not why they did it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I, I was more than happy to give him free exposure because he went above and beyond, you know, and it was, um, you, you're in this instance in like a, I don't know if I always trust mechanics. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's hard to find a mechanic that you trust. So when you find somebody that like goes above and beyond, it makes me happy to be able to say, yeah, that's like, well, let's do this. You know, I'll take it, take my car into you every single time. Yeah. It's like a dentist or anybody in any service where you are absolutely helpless. I <laughs> have no idea. Yeah. You yep. know, the, the, if you can delight your customer, I think that's, that's such a great comparison. Instead of discounting, focus on delighting. If you can yes. do that, you're not just building up, Hey, a great sales experience, but you're building up a friendship. You're, you're making a connection that goes beyond that point of sale. Yeah. It creates referrals and loyalty. And, you know. Exactly. So yeah, exactly. It, I was just going to say it creates that loyalty loop where somebody's going to be able to come back, but then it also creates those talk triggers where they're going to be able to talk to you. Or if, if somebody was to ask me, like I might not necessarily, you know, after getting that might not necessarily go and tell everybody, Oh, I got a bag of candy from my mechanic, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But if somebody asked me, do you know of a mechanic? Guess what I'm going to say right off the bat dude, these guys, I had, because I had a great experience there. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what I mean by customer experience really is the new brand. The more customer experience that you're offering, um, the better customer experience that you're able to provide to your customers, um, the, the more they're going to be able to buy into who you are, what you're doing and why you're doing it. 
uh, the more business you're going to be able to generate. Studies actually show it's uh, you can increase. This is a crazy figure, but you can increase your um, pr your revenue into your company by uh, upping your customer experience by three times if you provide a better value with your customer experience. So, I mean, think about that number for small businesses and what that could mean for that's them. That's nuts. It's like, that's don't, crazy don't nuts. take out 10%, take it up by 300%. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I know, you know, what we're doing, you know, website development, you know, that's something that, you know, rather than competing on price, here's X, Y, and Z that I can offer you, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, and that's exactly it. Like people will come back to you when they need something else or some other marketing. And it, it's true. It happens. It happens all the time. So I highly believe in, you know, going above and beyond. Like you mentioned books. A good book is uh, The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. Okay. I was just able to interview him. And that's what this whole book is about, is it's about, you know, giving, um, all of yourself to your clients, really. You mean and putting it all on the line and actually providing, you know, just like I said, more value than you can, than they could possibly pay for. And they're going to stick with you. And, you know, it, it's in having that giving attitude that, you know, you really earn customers trust. And when you earn their trust, you earn, earn them, you know, future customers in the future by them referring and then them coming back. Mm -hmm. So there was a, a brilliant video I watched the other day about, uh, gosh, what was it? It was like trust is not an and trust doesn't die or fade away, right? It just gets transformed. And if you lose trust in one person, you're going you want to find somebody else to put trust into. If you yeah. can lock that in, you can keep it. You're probably going to keep it for a long time because the 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 human thing doesn't like to change things. We like we like things to work and to keep working so that we can focus on other things. Um, so. Last minute that we have here, uh, Chris, what would be one uh, quick sort of recommendation somebody could implement today for uh, this, this whole kind of everything we've just talked about here? What would be one area that you recommend someone start focusing immediately? I would say, um, oh man, there's so that many. It's huge, I get it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would say uh, just taking a, a moment to actually think through your business and start with that question of why. That's the immediate thing that you should do. And then, you know, look at what your competition isn't doing and what your customers' needs, their emotional and felt needs, not just their need of, like you said, if they're a dentist coming in, but what's beyond that. People are afraid to go to a dentist. All right, well, how do you do that? You, you know, you provide them something that says like, hey, like, you know, it might be, you know, one of your dental assistants, you know, you make it a point every single time to have them walk through the process of what's going on. Hey, we've been there, done that, blah, blah. I don't know what that is, but, you know, figure out what the felt need is of your client mm -hmm. and speak directly to that. So, and then I want to correct myself too. The I pulled up the stat. Um, if you invest in customer experience initiatives, your company has the potential to double your revenue in 36 months. It wasn't three times. But still, like two times, you know, double your in 36 <laughs> months, that's still pretty, pretty good. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Fantastic. Chris, how can people get in touch with you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my website is createdbytilt.com um, for like the ad agency. My podcast, my puppy, by the way, uh, my podcast is tagteamup.com. And then uh, LinkedIn, I'm always on LinkedIn, um, linkedin.com slash, I think it's IN, uh, Chris dash ask you. On Twitter it, and Instagram, and my handle is just this is a skew um, for my last name, and I think I think that's about it. I think that's about every way. Like I'm I'm pretty accessible. I'm out there in the social world. LinkedIn's probably the easiest number one way to reach out to me, though. Fantastic! I'll be sure to put all that in the show notes. Chris, thanks for your time. This was yeah, no problem. Good deal.